Hey y'all, it's me, Laura Burns. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, welcome to my floor. <laughs> uh, there's Bug in the background. <laughs> um, and if this is your first time here, hi. <laughs> here are your jazz hands. Everybody gets them whether they like it or not. I hope that you do like it. Um, so I'm here today because I want to talk to you about um, inclusivity and accessibility in the world of fitness or like movement. Um, and I don't really have like notes or this super planned out, but I just really feel compelled to talk about this. And um, well, because of what I do and the weekend that I just had, and um, because of something that I originally started this video to show you, which is the pair of shorts that I'm wearing. But um, I'm gonna get to those in a minute. Um, and my camera has to be plugged in, so I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> okay, so um, if you are new to my channel or you've only ever watched videos about clothing from me, then this may be kind of a leap, and I don't know, maybe you're not even watching this, in which case you won't hear me say that, but whatever. Um, I just really feel compelled to make this video because I am a, I mean, technically, like I'm like a movement practitioner or like, you know, that's my job. My job is movement and health and wellness. Um, but I think that the way that I think about those things is very different from like the majority of like the health and wellness world that exists out here. Um, especially in the United States. I'm not really familiar with what it feels like in other countries. So I can only speak for what I know. Um, and so like on paper, if you saw that I was a yoga teacher, um, you picture a certain thing right and you probably don't picture me <laughs> and that's okay like I understand that um, I'm very used to that by now that is um, a very common response it's like oh you're a yoga teacher wow like how did that happen <laughs> kind of thing um, and the fact that that is people's response tells me like how necessary this whole conversation is um, and so I, let me tell you about my weekend and that'll kind of tell you like why I want to make this video. So I, um, this weekend was in LA for this really amazing event called We Rise, which is put on by the LA County Department of Mental Health. Um, and there was an organization called Project Heal, which is an eating disorder, um, recovery and support organization. Um, they helped bring me to LA to teach a yoga class and to be on a part of a panel discussion. Um, and it was great. It was really, really good. And I love that um, they specifically wanted me because they're trying to increase representation of fat people who have eating disorders because you don't see that portrayed in the media. You know, they're not making movies about like a fat girl who has an eating disorder. Um, despite the fact that binge eating disorder is like, oh, I forgot the statistic that she said, but I think it's the number one eating disorder is binge eating disorder, which is crazy because it was just like five years ago included in the DSM and like legitimized um, in the like mental health care world. Um, before five years ago, you couldn't use your insurance to get treatment for binge eating disorder, which is crazy. Anyway, um, so <laughs> back to accessibility and inclusiveness. So I, I'm coming off the heels of this weekend where there were people that were like, I want to hear your story. I want to see more people like you, um, teaching yoga, talking about eating disorders, being visible in this world that so often wants to, um, erase the fact that people like me exist. You know, our culture doesn't want fat people to exist. They want if you see a fat person, they should be wanting to be smaller. They should be actively trying to lose weight. They should take up less space. You know, I, I flew both directions and um, I made a video about flying while fat um, because it can be so anxiety producing. It can be traumatic um, to fly while fat. And in fact, on my way home in the airport, um, <laughs> my flight was delayed. I found this uh, new blog post by Jenny Brusso, who started Unlikely Hikers, which if you don't know Jenny Brusso or Unlikely Hikers, please check them out on Instagram. Um, and she had flown, I guess, this weekend or, or sometime recently and had a really, really bad experience, a really traumatic experience. 
and I was like, oh my god, you know, like, it, it hits me so hard because that could so easily be me, and um, I know that this sounds like off track, but it's all related, you know, so like, when you are a fat person, when you are disabled, you know, when you have these things about your person that lead you or that cause you to be marginalized by the rest of our culture, things like getting on an airplane and flying somewhere to go do something are not just an easy, like, okay, whatever. It, they're potentially traumatizing situations. Everything about our lives is harder. Um, and, you know, and of course there's a spectrum. Some things are harder for other folks or whatever. Um, and the same is true when trying to access um, fitness. I mean, I'm going to call it fitness, but like, I mean fitness in like the terms of any kind of movement, right? Going to the gym, trying to buy a bicycle to ride bikes, um, trying to find places to hike. Um, or be accepted in hiking culture, going to a yoga class, going to a dance class, taking, um, you know, martial arts or, you know, like whatever, any kind of movement, whatever. I'm just going to call it all fitness for now because it's easier than listing out all the things. But um, it's really difficult. And if you have never had this experience, then you don't know. So I will tell you, <laughs> it's really difficult to access these fitness environments um, when you are a fat person. And then if you add like any other intersections to that, it just gets harder and more challenging to um, either physically or emotionally or both um, in both ways to access these worlds because you are not portrayed. Um, you don't see like a commercial for a hiking vacation with a fat person in it. Um, and usually not with a person of color or a disabled person. Like, it's going to be like a thin white person who looks rich <laughs> in that commercial, right? When they advertise a gym, if they show a larger body, it's going to be as a before, right? It's, it's going to be as the don't be like this, you know, kind of thing. It's not saying like, here's a fat body and like, come here and work out and you can still be fat, you know? Um, whereas I enjoy like working out. I love going to the gym. I'm not trying to be smaller. I want to be stronger. I want to, um, you know, improve my cardio system. Like I want to, you know, be able to be less out of breath or, you know, all those things, like all these different benchmarks that are not about losing weight or becoming smaller. Um, so it's hard to access and it makes it hard to want to access. Like, why would I want to join a gym that posts like nothing but like the only representation of fat people is like to talk about it as a before picture. Why would I want to go there? And so um, coming off the heels of this weekend on this conference and meeting with the team at Super Fit Hero and hearing their vision for their company, it's like, oh my God, this breath of fresh air of inspiration and motivation and like fucking respect <laughs> and gratitude that there are um, people out there in smaller bodies that are really trying to improve shit for those of us in larger bodies. And like, I am almost tearing up just saying that sentence because that is how often, not very, um, that is how often I feel like straight size or like thin allies, like actually, um, being real allies and it's so interesting because lately on Instagram um, the accounts your fat friend who is a writer an anonymous writer who writes about all these things and um, Ash from the fat lip podcast have both been talking about um, advocating for super fats or infinite fats so basically the idea is like advocating up right so whatever privilege you have, advocating for those with less privilege. Um, and we all have privilege, even if we are uh, marginalized and oppressed in other ways. Like, we all have privilege, you know. We all have more privilege than someone else. And so there's always somebody that we can be advocating for. And they've really been doing a great job lately of talking about um, the super fats, or as Ash from the Fat Lip Podcast calls them, infinifats, um, which she describes as people in bodies that are, like, kind of in women's sizing at least, 
um, size 6X and up, which is I think like a 34 and up, maybe a 32 and up. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but like, so Ash actually made this chart. It's like four categories. Um, and Infinifat is like the largest and the second largest is super fat and that's where I fall. Um, and then under that is mid fat and then the last one or the first one, whatever, whichever direction you're going is uh, small fat. Um, and I know not everybody likes like labeling and terms and stuff like that, but I think it's important um, just to help people understand like what I'm talking about. Um, and so on the heels of them trying to advocate for um, really people increasing their allyship and their advocation, advocation, that's not a word, they're advocating for um, folks on larger bodies. Um, to meet then this weekend, a lot of thin people who are like, yes, like in our panel discussion, me and the other fat woman talked the most. I didn't expect that to happen. Um, they wanted to hear our stories. They wanted us to put our stories out there because there's less representation and it kind of blew my mind. I didn't expect it. And it was great. It was a wonderful surprise. Um, <laughs> and then to meet the super fit hero team and hear like straight from the founder and the staff there, like how important it is to them to have, um, in stock, like the larger sizes. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because I'm going to have my super fit hero moment. Cause y'all know, I mean, you probably already know, I love that brand, but like, I came away from this weekend like loving them even more like how is that even possible um so yeah and I know this video is really rambly I just wanted to share my thoughts like so much oh so much is swirling around my head because this weekend was a lot it was great but it was a lot and I'm just like oh and like what do I want to do now and how can I and it's um on the way it, it, like it all it all came it, like the universe is talking to me on the way over there, I listened to this podcast, Fat Faced Feelings. Um, they're the ones that actually interviewed me um, back in December. If you want to listen to that episode, you can go to their website, fatfacedfeelings.com, and listen to the episode with me. I think it's called Becoming Spacious with Laura Burns. Um, if you're interested like in me and my story and like hearing more about how I get, got into all this, that's a really great um, podcast to listen to because I go into depth and it's... Um, very, I was very vulnerable. I say a lot of things in there. Um, <laughs> anyway, but I listened to their, one of their later, latest podcasts that was talking about one of them took a trip to Disney, um, her and her husband, and she's a mid fat and he's a super fat. Well, technically he's an infinite fat according to Ash's like quadrant of sizes. Um, and she was talking about accessibility for um, the InfiniFat sized people and it really it opened her eyes and it opened my eyes to you know you think you're doing you're like plugging along you think you're doing a good job advocating for folks like in your community and I'm pretty much just talking about like kind of fat people right now like because I you know I'm a member of many communities but this is what I'm talking about anyway and I was just like, oh man, I'm not doing my best job. I could be doing a better job here. And it really, it was very impactful. It was a great episode. It was really impactful to hear her talk about that because um, she realized like on this vacation with her husband that she was not doing her best job. And I really empathized with that. I was like, oh my God, I can't imagine how that felt to realize like, oh, I've kind of been dropping the ball for my person, you know? Um, Anyway, so I started the weekend listening to that on the way to LA and I was like having that in my mind and then I had like the, the um, panel discussion that I met Super Fit Hero and so I'm just like, oh, so um, I, I just, this is, you know, like me rambling and just like kind of starting a conversation about what it means to make fitness communities accessible and welcoming, um, you know, like inclusivity is kind of not enough because like inclusivity to me is like yeah you're you can come you're welcome to come you know but then you go maybe to the running meetup or to the hiking group meetup or um whatever you know the the critical mass bike ride and you know everyone's welcome but then you get there and there there's no effort made then 
to make it really accessible um, and to make it like truly welcoming um, and equitable for everyone who goes. And that means that people are going to feel bad, possibly be traumatized and not come back. And that's what we don't want. We want people to feel like they can go back. Um, and that's something I think that Fat Girls Hiking is doing a pretty good job of, but not, and I can only speak for myself, the Houston chapter. I think we're doing a pretty good job, but I really feel like my eyes have kind of been opened this weekend after all this stuff and all these conversations. And how amazing is that when you can have these moments of like, oh, okay. And I, um, <coughs> I, we can do a better job. And so I'm excited to figure out what that looks like. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to figure out what that looks like. So let's talk about Superfit Hero. Um, if you're still listening to this and you're still watching this, like, bless you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of this conversation. And if you're a thin person watching this, oh my God, thank you for being here, for real. Um, so Superfit Hero, just in case you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, is um, an activewear company. They're um, owned by a woman, uh, created by a woman, uh, the clothes are made in the United States. The workers are paid a good wage. The materials are super quality. Like this is the nicest. This is the nicest activewear I have ever experienced. And I have tried a lot of things. I've tried more expensive activewear that was less good. Um, and this is a company that wants fat people to wear their clothes. And if you've ever heard about like the Lululemon controversy where they actively didn't want fat people to wear their clothes and in fact won't make larger sizes because they don't want fat people in their clothes, you'll know what a revelation it is to have a company say, oh yeah, we want fat people to wear our clothes. So um, they're an activewear company that started, um, they have like a roller derby history. Um, it's very cool. I've never, I had before this weekend, never met them in person, but have been kind of um, peripherally like aware slash a customer of theirs for a few years now. Um, I got connected with them because I wrote uh, an email. I was talking about this with them this weekend. It's so funny. Um, they were on this TV show that was like Shark Tank, but for fashion. And um, I saw them on there and they were talking about being a size inclusive brand and blah, blah, blah. And at that time, um, they only had sizes to 3X. And so as I do, <laughs> pretty often, I sat down and wrote an email and I was like, hey, I love you know what you're doing. I love your philosophy, but I think it's hard to call yourself size inclusive if you stop at a 3X. I would love to see you expand your sizes. I write a lot of these emails. I'm always pushing brands to be more size inclusive. Um, to have bigger sizes, um, especially if they're promoting themselves as being size inclusive or body positive or any of those things. Um, and I very, very, very rarely get a response back, but I got an email back. And not only that, I got an email from the woman who started the company, the woman who was on the show, the founder, um, which is really nice. Um, she didn't pawn it off on someone else. She didn't give me like a canned, you know, like form letter response. She wrote back and she was like, hey, I hear you. We're actually in development of that 4X size. Um, I'll let you know when it launches. And I was like, okay, cool, great. I'm never gonna hear from her again. Um, but I did join their mailing list so that I would hear about it because I was interested in the company um, and interested in their active wear and um, kind of just forgot about it, went about my business, lived my life, and then I got an email one day that was like, hey, we're launching 4X tomorrow, you know, like, get excited. Uh, and it was an email just to me, and I was like, oh my god, like, she actually did. And then I think, like, the next day, they sent out their newsletter saying, hey, it's here, 4X, and I was like, yes. And I bought a pair, like, right away. <laughs> I was so excited. Um, and that was my introduction to Superfit Hero, and... I got the leggings and this was like their first generation or maybe not this is like their second generation line of leggings and they don't sell that um sell them anymore they've since revamped their style and stuff but um they're so good the material was so good it was such high quality material the craftsmanship was good um for me that original sizing felt small um or was more compression-y than i really like to have because i have um um, IBS, a lot of times having things that are super compressioning on my belly, it's just not comfortable. 
Um, and so I didn't wear that pair as much as I would have had they been just a little bit bigger. But I loved the company. I loved the leggings. I mean, I kept them and I wore them sometimes when I wasn't having any symptoms, but they, I didn't just reach for them all the time. And then, and then they changed their sizing and um, made the sizing a little more generous. So the cuts were just a little bit larger um, and it actually made their line more inclusive because then um, larger fats who were okay with a little more compression could get into that top size, the 4X. Um, and so I got a pair of those and I was like, hallelujah, these are amazing. Um, so now the, the, the sizing is like so great for me. And actually I size down in their um, colorful prints because that material is different than the solids. Um, the solids, like the shorts that I'm wearing that you can't see, but I will show you. Um, it's a, uh, it's thicker. It's like, it's a completely different material. So the prints then are even more inclusive though they don't have a 6x a 6 could fit in the 5 because they're so stretchy so um, in case you're wondering about the fit for me the solids i think are true to size and um or size down if you like really compression like a lot um and then the prints to me i think you should size down one um and if you really like a lot of compression maybe even two sizes maybe so for example i buy my solids in a size 4x but i buy those prints now in a 3x um, and the fit is really good and i um for reference in case you don't know on bottom so on top i'm like a 26 28 on bottom i'm really like a 28 sometimes 30 if it's not real stretchy um and so if i can wear on bottom the 3x and the prints like think about what that means for people larger than me. It's really cool um, because they're very fun prints and people um, larger than me have such less of a selection. Like I have less of a selection than a mid fat or a small fat, but people larger than me have even less than I do. <laughs> like it's so cool to be able to find like fun leggings. Okay, so um, they did add a size 5X, which is amazing. And I really am so proud of them for doing that and um, grateful that they are so invested in being size inclusive. So here's some tea because I got to have lunch with them. I got to meet them. I saw their office. We talked for a long time about all things Superfit Hero. Um, and I got some insider information that's so cool. So what do I know? I know their plans kind of for the rest of the year and then after that. I'm very excited to say that um, they're doing really well and have been able actually to hire a company to help them manage the process as they roll out more products more quickly. So in the past, um, they've had, you know, kind of few launches here and there, um, but they're really looking at starting to, you know, roll out new products on a continuous regular basis which is really exciting because I want to see new stuff from them I want to see more patterns more colors different lengths of shorts and you know like every every season basically I want to see new stuff because that's what we're used to seeing so super excited they're going to be able to do that um which is huge for them um I'm so like I mean I'm not like I'm not like financially invested in their company but I'm emotionally invested in their company so I'm like so excited for them um so yeah, so uh, Mickey, the owner, was telling me about um, what they have plans to roll out. Like they just introduced these new six inch shorts, which I'm going to talk to you about. Um, and I'm so excited. I was very excited to hear about it. And now that I'm like wearing a pair, I'm like even more excited because I love them. Spoiler alert, they're amazing. Um, and just like what they're going to do. I got a hint about a new color that's coming out. I'm like, oh my God, it's so fun. I'm just like... I love like knowing what they're gonna do and hearing about like so many things that are happening for them. But what I really wanna tell you <clears throat> is something that Mickey told me that like, I can't imagine other companies saying. <laughs> um, actually two things. Well, the first of the those two things is that <clears throat> Mickey's vision for the company, like they specifically haven't sought out um, like big investors so that they could grow really fast and like become huge. 
Mickey really has a vision for the company where um, it's bigger than it is now, but not that much bigger, honestly. Like in terms of what I think her company could become if they took a certain path, um, she really wants to maintain that direct connection with the customers, that kind of small company feel and the control that comes with being a smaller company so that she can make sure that um, their philosophy and their values are like always on point, that are always being honored, that their customers are, um, you know, being treated the way that she wants them to be treated um, and that the focus doesn't shift away from like, you know, creating this accessible, inclusive environment, you know, allowing, um, help, what am I saying? Creating products to help people of many, many sizes access the fitness world um, in a more inclusive way, right? So all these things that we've been talking about this whole time. Anyway, and let me just say that this video is not sponsored. I just fucking love this company so much. <laughs> I was telling her, I was like, if I like your company, I am like evangelical about it. Like this, I know that this feels like an infomercial, but I was not, this is not sponsored. <laughs> um, I am a sponsored trainer, but that really just means that I'm on their um, body positive fitness finder. Um, it, I don't get money from them. Um, they don't send out free product to their sponsored trainers anymore. Um, we do get a discount code, thank God. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, the real thing that I want to share with you is um, something that Mickey told me. I, I asked her, I was like, how are the larger sizes selling? Because I'm just curious, like, are, you know, the four and five X's selling? And she's like, yeah, they're selling. Um, they're not the highest selling, but they're, you know, they're selling. Um, she said the highest selling size was 2X, by the way, which I think is interesting. Um, but what she said was when they um, purchase stock or they, you know, like order the runs of the different um, items that they have produced, that she buys more 4 and 5X sizes than she actually needs because she doesn't want to run out of them. Um, and I don't know what your experience has been if you're a larger fat person going into a store, if you like even can find a store that has those sizes for you, but they don't order extra of those sizes. They order less of those sizes. You might go into a store, like if you can find a store that has it in stock and there's a rack of shirts, there's going to be like one 5X or one 4X, a few more of the three, more and more and more. The smaller you get, the more sizes they're going to have in stock. Um, not even giving larger folks a chance. So it's like once somebody takes that one shirt, it's over. Or online, it's a similar thing. You know, like there's less stock in the larger sizes. They're going to they're gonna be the first ones to run out. So the fact that Mickey buys extra or orders extra in the larger sizes because she doesn't want to be a company that runs out of larger sizes, I'm like literally... Teary, I'm like almost crying right now. Um, like, man, what does that say about her company and their values and their commitment to accessibility and inclusiveness or inclusivity? Um, dude, like, it's crazy. It's amazing and wonderful. And I'm really grateful that that company, that their company exists, that they're, you know, doing what they're doing um, and that they like legitimately care. <laughs> oh my god I've never heard any other company say something like that anyway I didn't lose my shit like this at the lunch I was just like oh my god that's amazing um but the more I just reflect and think about like I can't imagine can you imagine like Torrid saying that they should say that they should do that <laughs> but that would require them to even have the larger sizes in the store you know like that would be a great first step anyway this is not a torrid shit talking video. Um, this is very long, I realize. I'm sorry. This is super long. In fact, um, I just saw that it's 30 minutes. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to talk to you about the shorts that I'm wearing because they're great. And they're the new, um, the newest item from Super Fit Hero. So um, I'll be back in a second. I'm going to stand up and um, talk to you about these shorts. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I want to talk to you about these shorts. This is their new six inch short. 
Um, I think the inseam on all the other shorts in the past has been nine inches, and so this is significantly shorter, three inches shorter. Um, it's the same styling, uh, the same construction as the old shorts. They've just reduced the inseam. And so um, while this is not a sponsored video, full disclosure, I did receive these shorts for free when I was there at their office. Um, so there you go. But I obviously like... If I didn't like them, I wouldn't talk about them. I wouldn't tell you that I like them if I didn't. Um, but I do because they're amazing. So same super like wide waistband, which is really nice. Um, same high waist, so you can pull it up. They're not gonna like fall down on you. They come up high enough on me like to where they like hit my natural waist. So they really stay put here. They have the same big old pockets on each side, which is amazing. Like your phone will fully fit. Even these big ass phones that we have now, they fully fit in here. They're not gonna fall out. Um, I got these in the beautiful cobalt blue. So they introduced these six inch shorts in black and this cobalt color. It's so pretty. So here's from the side. So here's the logo. So you can see that it does, it has changed the shape of my body a little. They are kind of compression-y. Um, it is pulling in my belly. If you're familiar with what my belly looks like, it is kind of pulled in, but not in any kind of way that is uncomfortable. And in fact, I think that um, this material is slightly thinner than their normal black solid material. Um, and I think it's a little, like, maybe less compression-y. I think the fit is great. I'm wearing the 4X, um, and they fit great. They're not too tight. Yeah, I mean, they just feel really good. I just keep, like, looking for something that's wrong. So for the length, you can see where they fall on me. Now, they're going to look longer on me because my thighs are very short. My thighs are not long at all. The 9-inch shorts hit, like, down here, like, on my kneecap. Like, they're long on me. <laughs> um, so, like, if you have longer thighs than me, which you probably do, they're going to be shorter on you. <laughs> but they're long enough, um, I mean, certainly on me, to cover, like, the chub rub area. Um, here's, let me go again. Here's the side. So you can see I have a big old butt, so they come up to above my butt. If you have less of a butt, they're going to come up higher. They come up nice and high in the front. Here's the back. I don't know what this dance is. <laughs> anyway, they're great. They're amazing. And I'm very excited because I was just telling Richard that um, I want to buy a new crop of bike shorts because I've been wearing the same Rainbow Curves bike shorts for like four years. And I have to say, they're great. They have lasted so long. Like for, <laughs> for something that I wear so often, um, I wear bike shorts uh, almost every day of my life. Um, <laughs> uh, this like it's basically like my uniform. This and like a little dress over it is like standard Laura Burns outfit. Um, so those Rainbow Curves ones held up really well for like maybe three or four years. I can't remember, um, but they just have lost their rebounding ability. Um, so they get stretched out and they don't come back anymore. Um, and they're annoying to wear. <laughs> So, plus the waistband on theirs, um, the way that they've done, like, the waistband and the elastic, it's kind of thick, and so you can, like, see the line under clothes sometimes, it is annoying. So I'm very excited because these are nice and thin and close to the body, um, and with this new longer length, these are going to be my new go-to shorts. So I'm super excited. So I did, well, I got these for free, um, I'm now going to go and buy, like, a bunch of pairs. <laughs> Because I really want to replace the ones that I have, and I think um, these are going to be really good. And so here are the new shorts. They're great. I love them so much. Um, I love all Superfit Hero products. I mean, I have to say, it's just true. Um, sorry for this like crazy infomercial and this really rambly talk about accessibility and inclusivity. <laughs> um, but it's just, this is what's on my mind. This is what's happening. This is what I wanted to talk about today. So this is the video that you get. <laughs> Um, please comment below and tell me any thoughts that you have about all the stuff we've talked about um, regarding the fitness or whatever, all these communities or like the wellness community and all these things. Um, what are your experiences? What are your thoughts about this? Um, do you feel like, you know, maybe you're not doing, like me, the best job of advocating for 
um, advocating up, right? So folks that are larger than you or people who are more oppressed or marginalized than you. Um, I want to hear, I would love to hear um, if you want to share. <laughs> if you like maybe have a realization like, oh, maybe I'm not doing the best that I could. Um, yeah, share that. And if you have ideas about ways that we can advocate up, um, please leave them in the comments below. Whatever community it is you're talking about, whatever kinds of people that you're talking about, um, please share and give people ideas so that we can all be better and do better and be better allies to other people. <laughs> what do you think of these shorts? <laughs> I'm thinking of things. What do I want to know? What do you think of these shorts? Do you like the new six inch length? Do you think that would work better for you? Do you also have very short thighs like me? <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad that, um, I'm so grateful to have this place to like make these really rambly videos about fitness and body positivity and inclusivity and accessibility and all these things. Like, um, thank you so much for uh, watching this, for caring um, and for being here. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Thank you so much to the supporters who make it possible to create this content. If you've enjoyed my videos, learned anything, been inspired, or just want to keep seeing more content, please show me some love and consider supporting me on Patreon or coffee.com to make a one-time donation. Your support means everything to me. Thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate you, your presence, your engagement, and our community. All the links will be in the description box below.